The word retraction means a withdrawal of a statement, accusation, or undertaking, and the word retract means withdraw, a statement or accusation, as untrue or unjustified. In the supposed retraction document, Jose Rizal is alleged to have written. I declare myself a Catholic and in this religion in which I was born and educated I wish to live and die. I retract with all my heart whatever in my words, writings, publications and conduct has been contrary to my character as son of the Catholic Church. Thus, the meaning of Rizal's retraction is not simply he disavowed masonry and religious thoughts that opposed Catholic belief, but he disowned all his life's work, including Noli Mi Tang He Re and El Filibusterismo, that he withdraw all he writes against the Catholic Church as untrue or unjustified. However, to fully understand the issue, the implication, and the relevance of the issue regarding Rizal's alleged retraction, one must first learn the background, the nature, and the effects of Rizal's works and writings. This will give us a deeper insights to arrive at sound judgment regarding this issue if Rizal indeed retracted or withdraw all he writes against the Catholic Church. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will not miss any of my new videos. Rizal was one of the leaders of the reform movement, or the propaganda movement that ushered after the execution of the three Filipino priests, the Gumburza. Agoncillo writes, The unjust execution of the three Filipino priests Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora was a turning point in Philippine history, for it ushered a new era of the reform movement. Realizing the danger of fighting for their cause on the home front, the sons of the wealthy and well-to-do Filipino families migrated to Europe to breathe the free atmosphere of the old world. There they initiated a sustained campaign for reforms in the administration of the Philippines. For more than a decade the Filipino propagandists waged their war of propaganda against the Spanish authorities and friars. The Filipino men of wealth and intellect campaigned not for the independence of the country from Spain, but for the reform in the administration of the Philippines. So, the reformists waged war of propaganda against Spanish authorities and friars for more than a decade. Agoncillo further writes, the dissatisfaction of the Filipino men of wealth and intellect was centered around the abuses of the Spanish authorities, civil as well as clerical. To move Spain to make the needed reform in the Philippines, the reformists exposed the abuses of the Spanish authorities in the Philippines, civil as well as clerical. In doing so, the reformists utilized the power of the pen. But it was only after 1880 when the era of propaganda through novels, newspapers, pamphlets, and journals dawned, that patriotic literature flourished and captured the imagination of the Filipinos. Rizal published his novel Noli Mi Tang Hei in 1887. This book is a novel in the sense that the technique employed by the author is that of fiction, but it is a mistake to suppose that because it was written in novel form, it is, therefore, fiction. Rizal himself made this clear in his letter to Felix Rizal Erection Hidalgo. The book contains things of which no one among themselves has spoken up to the present, they are so delicate that they cannot be touched by anybody. In so far as I am concerned, I have tried to do what nobody likes to do. I have endeavored to answer the calumnies which for centuries have been heaped on us and our country, I have described the social condition, the life our beliefs, our hopes, our desires, our grievances, our griefs. I have unmasked hypocrisy which, under the guise of religion, came to impoverish and to brutalize us. I have distinguished the true religion from the false, from superstition, from that which traffics with a holy word to extract money, to make us believe in sorcery, of which Catholicism would be ashamed if it were aware of it. The facts sign are all true and actually happened. I can prove them.
Rizal exposed not only the abuses and defects of the Spanish civil authorities but also the abuses and errors of the friars and of the Catholic Church in general, because during that time, the Roman Catholic Church was the one who truly reigning in the country. Spain is one of those countries in which the division between the church and the state is not clearly defined, and in which the church has much too generally dominated the state. In the Philippine Islands this was the case to a marked degree. In the Philippines during the Spanish period there was no separation of state and church. The Roman Catholic Church was the only state religion and generally dominated the state. How powerful the Roman Catholic Church during that time! The secular representatives of Spain wielded a relatively small influence compared to that of the friars. They remained for relatively short terms and were likely to find their tenure of office yet more curtailed if they should venture to interfere with or question friar control. The Catholic Church became so powerful, and priests holding both civil and ecclesiastical powers. Forbes enumerated the functions of a priest in a municipality to show how far he used his advisory position in a way that made him absolute executive head. However, the church and the friars abused their powers, and what make the situation much worse, the priests cannot be sued in civil courts. Thus, during the Spanish period, the Roman Catholic Church was the Spanish colonial power in the islands, the church was the colonial government. Regarding all he wrote in his novel, Rizal emphatically declared, The facts I narrate are all true and actually happened. I can prove them. The novel gained immediate popularity. On the effect of Rizal's novel, Dr. Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, a Spaniard born in the Philippines, said, All the defects of the public administration of affairs, the ignorance of the functionaries and the corruption, the vices of the clergy, the incapacity of the governors, and the inferiority of the Spanish culture in these islands were made manifest. The prestige which the friars had enjoyed, and which was based only on the ignorance of the masses, crumbles away when the private lives of the members of the religious orders in the provinces were described in the pages of Reisel's book and the immorality and the viciousness of the friars were exposed to the public view. So vividly were the defects in the Spanish colonial administration described that the entire structure tottered, and the prestige which Spanish civilization in the islands had attained up to that time in the minds of the Filipino was completely discredited. A year after the publication of Rizal's set novel in 1887, the Filipinos held an anti-friar demonstration. On March 1, 1888, shortly after Rizal's departure from Manila, a troublous event rocked Manila. This was the anti-friar demonstration led by a patriotic Filipino lawyer, Doroteo Cortes, with the secret assistance of M. H. Del Pilar and Jose A. Ramos. The demonstrators, including the gobernador Celios of Binondo, Tundo, Pandacan, Santa Cruz, and other suburban towns, marched through the city streets to the Ayuntamiento, City Hall and submitted to the acting civil governor of Manila province, Don José Centeno, a Spanish geologist by profession, an anti-friar manifesto entitled, Long Live the Queen! Long Live the Army! Down with the Friars! Long Live the Queen! Long Live the Army! Down with the Friars! Now you know who was the real enemy of Rizal and the Filipinos during their time. Because of Rizal's works the entire structure of the Spanish colonial administration totter. Remember that when speaking of Spanish colonial administration, this referred to both civil and church authorities. Also because of Rizal's works the prestige of the Spanish civilization, of the friars and the Roman Catholic Church completely discredited. Rizal's works also awakened Philippine nationalism and fueled the already growing anti-friar sentiment. Meanwhile the ideas which had been agitated by the wealthy and educated Filipinos had worked their way down to the poor and humble classes. They were now shared by the peasant and the fishermen. Especially in those provinces, where the religious orders owned estates and took as rental a portion of the tenants' crop, there was growing hatred and hostility to the friars.
the Filipinos looked on to Rizal as their leader and inspiration, and his works fueled the anti-friar sentiment and spread the nationalistic ideas that led to the founding of the revolutionary movement. Indeed, the anti-friar sentiment was one of the main causes of Philippine Revolution. The secular representatives of Spain wielded a relatively small influence compared to that of the friars. They remained for relatively short terms and were likely to find their tenure of office yet more curtailed if they should venture to interfere with or question friar control. The dissatisfaction, which culminated in the revolution, nominally against Spain, was, therefore, really a revolt against the religious orders. During the early years of the Katipunan, Rizal remained in exile in Dapitan. Revolution had broken out in Cuba in February 1895, and Rizal applied to the governor to be sent to Cuba as an army doctor. His request was granted, and he was preparing to leave for Cuba when the Katipunan revolt broke out in August 1896. The revolution spread rapidly in the provinces of Manila, Cavite, Bulacan, Nueva Ecija, Laguna, Batangas, Pampanga, and Tarlac. To frighten the population into submission, the Spanish authorities resorted to a reign of terror. Spanish authorities knew that Rizal is the inspiration behind the revolution and his works awakened Philippine nationalism and fueled the already growing anti-friar sentiment. The Spaniards knew they have to eliminate the source of inspiration, the man and his works, to prevent the revolutionary movement from becoming national in scope. Although Rizal was allowed to leave Manila on a Spanish steamship, however, the governor apparently forced by reactionary elements, ordered Rizal's arrest en route, and he was sent back to Manila to be tried by a military court as an accomplice of the insurrection. Rizal was brought before a military court on fabricated charges of involvement with the Katipunan. A brief trial was held on December 26 and, with little chance to defend himself, Rizal was found guilty and sentenced to death. On December 30, 1896, he was brought out to the Luneta and executed by a firing squad. Rizal became the inspiration behind the revolutionary movement through his works, his writings. Spanish authorities knew it was not enough to eliminate the man, but they also have to eliminate the effects of his works, his writings. Thus, the very day of Rizal's death, December 30, 1896, the alleged retraction of Rizal was published in Larvas Española and Jario de Manila. A day after the execution, on December 31, 1896, the retraction was published in Madrid through the newspaper El Imparcial. Another text of Rizal's retraction appeared in Barcelona on February 14, 1897, in the fortnightly magazine in La Juventud. It came from an anonymous writer who revealed himself 14 years later as Father Balaguer. By showing a retraction document, the Spanish authorities are hoping that Rizal's death will not become a rallying cry for the Filipinos in the quest for independence. They fear it so much that the authorities even broke a promise to the Rizal family to release the body to them after the execution and instead dumped his body on a secret, unmarked grave. This document will also serve as a face-saving measure for the friars whom Rizal made fun of and criticized in his novels. Many ask the church authorities to show them the original retraction letter, including the family of Rizal, but they failed to do so. Thus, contrary to what they expect, although the Spanish authorities published Rizal's retraction, in Manila and in Spain, but because the Spanish authorities failed to produce the original retraction letter, and Filipinos did not believe that Rizal retracted, Rizal's death became a rallying cry for their quest of independence. The Spanish authorities knows how important it is during that time to make the Filipinos believe that Rizal retracted his works. The reason why they published the alleged retraction letter on the day itself of Rizal's execution. During the Philippine Revolution, showing this retraction letter of Rizal can help a lot the Spanish authorities to pacify the Filipinos. So why they failed to do so? There was no excuse not to show it if it really exists during that time. 
the discovery of the alleged original text in 1935, instead of ending doubts about Rizal's retraction, has in fact encouraged it because the newly discovered text retraction differs significantly from the text found in the Jesuits and the Archbishop's copies. There are those who say that it doesn't matter if Rizal retract or not, what matter most is his action that makes him a hero. But, what action are they referring to that makes Rizal a hero? Rizal is the Philippine national hero not because he led the revolutionary movement or he participated in the revolution. He is a hero not because he died in the battlefield. He is the Philippine national hero because of his works or his writings that inspired the Filipinos to act to end the tyranny of Spanish civil and church authorities, and he gave his life for it to prove to the Filipinos that all he wrote are true. Because of Rizal's works the entire structure of the Spanish colonial administration tottered, and the prestige of the Spanish civilization, and of the friars and the Roman Catholic Church completely discredited. His writings began the wheel of change of the Philippines' political, social and religious setting that led to our independence. So, the issue of Rizal's retraction is not irrelevant today. If it is true, or if he did it willingly, this shook the foundation of Rizal's heroism and the justification of the Filipinos' revolt against the Spaniards. But if he did not, and the documents were forgeries, then somebody has to pay for trying to deceive a nation. Do you agree? Please leave a comment below. If you find this video informative and helpful, please give it a like and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will not miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.